Ever since the apparent disappearance of SCP-682, the hard-to-destroy reptile, the SCP Foundation had been growing restless. All personnel aware of the situation were filled with conflicted feelings of paranoia and relief. Perhaps at long last, one of the universe's most hateful and dangerous anomalies was gone for good, and there had been no trace of the monster since the chemical plant explosion. But given the Keter-class reptile's track record with all methods of annihilation, none of the researchers were too optimistic. In reality, none of them had any idea that the actual whereabouts of SCP-682 was five levels deep into the sprawling, seemingly endless labyrinth of liminal dimensions, known simply as the Backrooms. It was a far crueler and more alien reality than any punishment that the SCP Foundation could have dreamed up for the reptile, but nonetheless, it was the reality that SCP-682 had to face. After rampaging for hours through what appeared to be an infinite hotel, SCP-682 was finally able to check out of his unexpected stay in the Level 5 resort. As was becoming routine at this point, movement between levels of the back rooms came down to finding an ideal surface to no-clip further. In the case of the entrance to the back rooms Level 6, the hard-to-destroy reptile managed to find such a location in the vast boiler room of Level 5. With no reason to hesitate and frankly being incredibly disgusted with the appearance of human hospitality in the Infinite Hotel, SCP-682 vanished into the noclip surface and re-emerged into the evidently pitch-black void of Level 6. This new level was dark, absolutely so. It was the kind of advanced darkness only observed in the depths of our reality's largest cave systems, where no natural or artificial light can reach. 682 was not deterred by this, of course. The highly adaptable organism had already developed sophisticated echolocation sonar in order to navigate the yellow, wallpapered maze of Level 1, as well as infrared night vision, which it had heavily utilized in Level 2. Though Level 6 remained for all intents and purposes concealed by darkness, SCP-682's evolved senses could easily make sense of its layout. Aside from the impenetrable shroud of darkness that pervaded the entire level, the reptile soon found Level 6 to be largely familiar territory. Like every previous level of the backrooms that SCP-682 had traversed, this level took the form of a seemingly random arrangement of tight hallways that stretched on for a fathomless distance in every direction. More empty tunnels, you've got to be kidding me, SCP-682 thought to itself. This latest infinite labyrinth was the most infinite and labyrinthian of all the infinite labyrinths that SCP-682 had wandered through since it no-clipped into the back rooms. There was, however, something unusually calming about this level, as if being here made the reptile that much less driven to escape. It still wanted more than anything to find more living things to destroy, but on level 6, it was decidedly willing to take its time and see how far these tunnels would go before it got its next fix of violence. What SCP-682 didn't know is that the darkness of Level 6 was not merely a property of a lack of lighting, and possessed the supernatural ability to induce feelings of intense anxiety and existential dread within any human beings unfortunate enough to be trapped within. The emphasis being on the words, human being, which SCP-682 was anything but. While the SCP's sudden shift in attitude might have been a side effect of its adaptable nature, it's very possible that any sufficiently malicious entity might feel right at home on level 6. Not that there appeared to be any other entities present on this level. Regardless, the reptile was having a grand old time moving from hallway to hallway, and for once, it was starting to see the appeal of delayed gratification. It wasn't overly concerned about not encountering life on this floor, because in its omnicidal mind, SCP-682 was thinking how much of a special treat it would be to be able to destroy something entirely new, whatever it might be. For all the predictability of their maze-like structure, the back rooms were full of surprises. Case in point, SCP-682's recently adapted echolocation picked up a single, isolated humanoid figure several hundred miles away. The reptile chuckled to itself. What a sucker. This is too easy. He began to leisurely maneuver towards the lone humanoid, who curiously appeared to be standing in that one place without any signs of movement. This pleased SCP-682, and when it eventually made its way to the room where the humanoid was located, 
it found that its latest prey had been waiting patiently for the inevitable doom that the creature would bring. The strange humanoid, the only entity that SCP-682 had encountered on level 6, appeared to be an ordinary man standing next to an enormous light switch on the wall. Pull the switch. Please pull the switch, the man repeated. He was a sitting duck. SCP-682 was going to relish this one. The reptile moved forward with pointed aggression, and soon there was no man standing there, only the switch he once begged passerbys to pull. 682 proceeded to exit the quiet room, having no interest in the light switch or what might happen if it were pulled. Shortly thereafter, 682 began to hear scuttling sounds within the darkness, as if a giant crustacean or insect were quickly moving through the halls. The sensory data that it was receiving from its echolocation didn't detect any nearby forms of life, least of all with any anatomy that would correspond to those kinds of chitinous sounds. Before long, another sound became faintly audible throughout level 6, that of crashing ocean waves. 682 had nothing but time and no better place to go, so it began to follow the sounds towards their source. Gradually, the tidal noises increased in volume to the point that even they began to overwhelm 682's very own sound waves of echolocation. Although temporarily struggling for direction, SCP-682 felt a sudden decline in the surface of the floor beneath its feet. It appeared to be a staircase, and the ocean waves could be heard coming from just beyond. As the reptile descended the stairs, the soothing feelings that had accompanied it through its journey across level 6 began to rapidly dissipate. When SCP-682's claws touched down on the final step, all traces of easygoing apathy had fully faded and were replaced once again with the boundless spite and malice that defined its usual mindset. It was pleasant while it lasted. SCP-682 now found itself in a damp room full of assorted furniture, including a bookcase with a few books, a coffee table, and a single chair, non-glitched to be precise. The puddle of water on the floor beneath it was about three inches deep. The glow of a fluorescent ceiling lamp was a stark departure from the utter darkness of the previous hallways in level 6. But of course, it was different. This was level 7, or rather the entrance room to level 7. SCP-682 had little reason to linger in this place for long, as the furniture was neither alive nor large enough to support its mass. An open doorway adjacent to the staircase appeared to lead to a great body of salt water, which was doubtlessly the source of the ocean noises. As SCP-682 continued its advance into this new lair, it was suddenly met with a change of gravity. The moment that it stepped in front of the doorway to the ocean, 682's relative relationship to the entrance room's gravity shifted such that the doorway became decidedly down. In a hilariously undignified fashion, the Keter class anomaly tumbled through the doorway to level 7 proper and plummeted directly into the vast sea below. This was something new. While level 7 was without a doubt another impossibly huge liminal nightmare dimension contained within the back rooms, it wasn't another maze of hallways, or at the very least, it didn't look like one. Though there was no visible sun anywhere on the horizon, the blue sky up above the ocean was well illuminated, as if to imply the presence of daylight. SCP-682 landed in the water beneath the entrance room with a tremendous splash, and instantly its body began to sink deeper into what appeared to be an immense uncharted ocean without a sea bottom. Within seconds, 682's echolocation adjusted to the underwater environment, becoming more like that of a dolphin. With this enhanced sonar, SCP-682 attempted to detect if there were any living organisms within the immediate area. While the ocean was mostly devoid of any new entities, as was starting to become customary in these new levels, the SCP did discover a series of barren rocky islands along the surface of the water. Additionally, there were bigger shapes in the far distance, which the sonar could detect, but due to their colossal size, the nature of these unknown objects was, well, unknown. Some of the strange shapes were drifting slowly through the deep, indicating that while the ocean of level 7 was far from a thriving ecosystem, it may yet contain other beings that SCP-682 could fight to the death. In order to cross the ocean and find any of these potential formidable entities, SCP-682 would have to adapt its physical form once again. The first priority was for it to grow a set of gills, allowing SCP-682 to breathe in this underwater environment. Then, its four reptilian limbs began to stretch and flatten, 
developing into full-sized aquatic flippers, the likes of which might be found on a prehistoric whale or a leopleurodon. With these newly minted bad boys, SCP-682 could gracefully glide through the water like the angriest submarine to ever voyage to sea. If it cared for petty thrills or the sensation of freedom, 682 may have perceived this experience as fun. However, anything close to a non-negative emotion that the SCP was capable of had been left behind in Level 6. It was more furious than ever at its current predicament, especially because the encounter on the previous level had been so brief and anticlimactic. As the Leopleurodon mode SCP-682 zoomed deeper into the watery depths of Level 7, the bright rays of daylight from the level sky became more distant. In this cooler and darker twilight zone, SCP-682 began to see bones floating in the water. The scattered remains of humans and aquatic creatures could be seen throughout this area of Level 7, all entirely picked clean, with perfectly white bones on display. While typically a creature being submerged this deep into a terrestrial ocean from our reality would result in a severe increase in water pressure, Level 7 appeared to remain at a constant and manageable level of pressure, insufficient to crush even an ordinary human skeleton. Not that this equivalent level of water pressure would pose any threat or hindrance to SCP-682, and it continued its descent away from the daylight zone and further into the twilight zone. Some of the skeletons here were absolutely titanic in size. Clearly, these were the massive drifting shapes that SCP-682's dolphin sonar had sensed from the surface. Whatever these things were, they all met their end a long time ago. Frustrated that once again the backrooms had denied it a meaningful challenge, the hard-to-destroy reptile almost didn't see the hostile entity darting towards it with the intent to seek and destroy. 682 wasn't the only creature in this ocean with a numerical designation. The so-called Entity 720, also commonly known as Tiny, smashed through the floating skeletons and landed a glancing blow on the SCP with his massive spear. Who dares trespass in my domain? Tiny shouted, the Entity's bioluminescent body glowing with arrogant pride. Its words were telepathic, beamed directly into 682's mind. Naturally, 682 began to evolve telepathy of its own in preparation to respond. While the aquatic being was over twice the size of SCP-682, and armed with a fearsome weapon of whittled bone, no doubt carved from one of the many primeval and unknowable skeletons of Level 7, the Keter-class anomaly was not about to back down from this obvious provocation. Your domain? 682 growled. Should I take you that you are the ruler of this back rooms? Is this where this commendable labyrinth ends? Entity 720 laughed with an overconfident bluster and spoke. This is level 7, and I'm afraid you're a great many levels away from the last one. But don't worry, simple beast. I can promise you that this is the last level you'll ever see. SCP-682 decided it didn't like this thing. It was acting far too cocky for its own good. You're a lonesome and disgusting piece of work, aren't you? Again, the entity laughed in 682's face. Likewise, puny lizard, he said. Shall I teach you to fear me? SCP-682 gnashed its teeth and exclaimed, That's my line. Neither of these monsters was backing down, and it was clear that an epic battle between the two of them was about to take place. 682 rushed in, jaws open wide to deliver a brutal bite. But Entity 720 was deceptively fast for its size, and swung its spear into 682's side, catching it mid-aquatic charge and sending it careening into a cluster of floating ribs. As if showing off, Tiny twirled his weapon with a flourish before unleashing a lightning-fast barrage of powerful spear thrusts. To its annoyance and surprise, SCP-682 could feel its body sustaining damage over the course of multiple impacts. He hated to admit it, but this was one entity from the back rooms that wasn't all talk. In response to Tiny's merciless attack, plates of natural armor began to cover SCP-682. This improved its defense, but the SCP still needed to take the fight to the entity. Or better yet, 682 dodged one of the incoming spear attacks and clamped its teeth around the middle of the weapon. It bit down like a vice, crushing a bit of bone but, again, to its surprise, failing to close its jaw completely and thus being unable to break the spear. Did you think that my mighty spear would break so easily? Tiny scoffed. He whirled the spear through the water with enough force to create a tumultuous whirlpool, spinning 682 in circles in an attempt to disorient it. 
He placed both his large hands on the lower parts of the spear and with a precise swish and flick motion of a fisherman casting a line, launched the reptile flying through the depths. How could this be happening? SCP-682 wondered. It roared in anger, causing the water around it to ripple with the intensity of its sound waves. This caused an unforeseen reaction in Tiny, who hesitated and doubled back in response to the noise. SCP-682 grinned through its horrible teeth. So, that was its weakness. Tiny recovered from the shock of 682's roar moments later, and it was seemed he was trying to play his reaction off as disgust. Pathetic! Now say goodnight! He said as he aimed to hit SCP-682 with his most powerful weapon strike yet. Tiny struck his foe with all the force he could muster, running through it like he was spearfishing. But in response, SCP-682 released a high-pitched sonic screech that shook the waters around both adversaries even more than the last. The impact of the sound waves was so powerful that all surrounding skeletons began to shatter into small shards of bone. Tiny was hit straight on with the sonic vibrations from SCP-682's sensory attack and was immediately rendered unconscious, sinking like a stone to the area even deeper below the Twilight Zone, the Midnight Zone. The fight between SCP-682 and Entity-720 was effectively over. SCP-682 shook off the Entity's final blow and began to regenerate from all his injuries. That telepathic creature had been by far the most challenging thing that it had encountered during its journey through the backrooms, but the increase in durability to its own armor would prove useful in protecting the reptile from any other entities with a similar level of brute force. Diving after its fallen foe and hoping to finish the job, SCP-682 entered into the Midnight Zone. It descended past several more vaguely humanoid skeletons and countless fish-like skeletons, which seemed to have no real beginning or end. Apparently, the body of Entity 720 had sunk quickly out of reach of the SCP, or perhaps Tiny had fled the battle out of fear. While happiness and triumph were not within the emotional capacity of SCP-682, it did take a wicked sense of glee in crushing that Entity's stubborn pride. It continued to swim directly downward, emboldened by the victory. Eventually, SCP-682 came to the mouth of an enormous cavern towards the end of the Midnight Zone. The opening appeared to be within the side of a tall underwater mountain, while the thought of having to travel through more narrow spaces reminded it unfavorably of its containment facility, SCP-682 was beginning to accept that the backrooms rarely manifested as one open space. If claustrophobic caves and corridors were the one consistency, SCP-682 had long been accustomed to those kinds of spaces. Sure enough, entering the Midnight Mountain soon revealed the entrance to the lair of the Sorceress. Oh, my apologies, that's a completely different story about a feisty reptile traveling through Forgotten Realms and defeating everything in its path. This isn't Spyro Explained, it's SCP Explained. Getting back on track, 682 arrived in a subterranean system of rocky tunnels, which, while no longer entirely were totally submerged, was damp with water, almond water, because what else? This was the back rooms, level 8. Despite the fact that the entrance to level 8 was beneath the midnight zone of level 7, and there appeared to be no natural source of light, the visibility within these caverns was surprisingly high. It was to the point that even an average human could, with little effort, perceive their surroundings here. Is this some kind of sick joke? SCP-682 thought to itself. If whoever trapped me in these back rooms thinks they can contain me in a place humans could survive, I must show them just how wrong they are. When I find them, it's on sight. Since 682 had already developed echolocation and night vision, level 8 wasn't exactly a new frontier. Yet it began to dawn on the hard to destroy reptile that this might be all the back rooms was, a never-ending collection of cavernous new dimensions to wander aimlessly until it stumbled across the entrance of the next level by chance. It could go on forever, with seemingly no rhyme or reason. Though the oceans of level 7 had presented 682 with a concept that the backrooms might have an outside that could be used as a means to escape back to its native reality, the truth appeared to be that there was no distinction between an exterior and an interior within these dimensions. From the second it had no clipped into this place, 682 might have effectively been condemned to meander through infinite levels of the backrooms until the end of time. Discourage wasn't the right word for how 682 was feeling. 
It was far more accurate to say that the reptile was absolutely fuming, with barely restrained rage for the unfathomable cosmic forces that had brought it here. They would all pay dearly for the disgusting indignity it had suffered. As SCP-682 progressed deeper into the winding tunnels and echoing caverns of the back rooms level 8, it found itself surrounded once more by a hostile swarm of death moths. The larger females began to spit acid, melting away portions of the armor its body had worked so hard to adapt. It always had to be acid. 682 let out a low, rumbling noise that sounded somewhat like a sigh of exasperation. After its intense and thrilling battle with Tiny, was it really going to have to return to destroying these worthless bugs that even those weak kneed jelly bags on the mobile task forces could handedly dispatch? You idiot creatures. Do you have any idea what you're dealing with here? SCP-682 grumbled. The death moths didn't respond. They merely continued to flap around in the air around the SCP's head and bombard the reptile with more acid. 682 was positively seething. Know your place! It mercilessly devoured every last death moth before making its way deeper into level 8. Perhaps with the myriad of monsters said to lurk in this level, SCP-682 would find itself faced with another worthy challenger after all. Now go check out part 1 and 2 of the SCP-682 vs. the Backroom series to relive all the insane, extra-dimensional reptile carnage that brought us back to now.